Oh, hi, everybody. It's Joe Chaffee. We finally made it to Friday at the end of this week, uh, December 28th, 2018, 6 o'clock Eastern Time. Uh, good to see uh, uh, the early birds all on board. And uh, we've got Alfred Phillips, who has the distinction of being the northernmost viewer of uh, these live streams as he is on uh, the chat board tonight. He's from Wainwright, Alaska. Uh, right on the north coast, and I get such a kick out of that uh, that that you're 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 so far north and you're watching um, this live stream. It's truly a thrill for me, and uh, I figured to give everybody an idea of what it's like in Wainwright, Alaska, at the moment. Well, uh, it is cold, uh, perhaps tame by Wainwright, Alaska standards, uh, but nonetheless, it is cold. And I'm just going to find my window here. Hang on one second. So I just pulled up uh, the uh, weather service forecast and it shows you where it is on the map here. So if you go to weather.gov and look on look where the map is of the U.S. in the lower right corner, you're going to see uh, Wainwright. Uh, you're going to see Alaska. Just click on it, and then it's and then uh, you can, you can search it Wainwright, Alaska, just to show you where it is. It's the Here's a little green box, okay? That's where it is. And here is northern Alaska. I mean, it's way up there, <laughs> okay? And right now, uh, it is 8 below 0, which I guess is pretty tame. Uh, northeast wind at 7, although you're on the coast, so you probably don't get to the extremes that they do see in uh, in the inland areas uh, in, in, in Alaska. Northeast wind at 7. Five mile visibility in light snow, and just looking at the forecast going ahead, uh, doesn't get above zero through this whole period. Uh, minus six, uh, minus six for the high this afternoon. Twelve below tonight. Twelve, so temperatures go nowhere tomorrow. Chance of snow and areas of freezing fog. Yeah, I guess so. And uh, warms up to uh, Low of minus 16, high minus 10, low minus 14, high minus 8, low minus 16, high minus 5. Um, so you got those snowflakes in all your forecast boxes there, Alfred. I think there are a lot of snow lovers that are probably um, envious of that. Uh, but uh, again, I, I love that you're on here. and it, I think that that's terrific. So well, welcome everybody tonight on, uh, on my uh, YouTube channel. If you're new to my YouTube channel, by the way, just... Uh, you can you can uh, subscribe to it for free and set your notifications. Uh, you need a Gmail account to do it, but subscribe, uh, join up, and uh, subscribe for free. Get notifications so uh, you're on board when we do our live streams, which is once a day. Usually I do them at seven o'clock Eastern time. Today uh, I pushed it back to uh, six o'clock Eastern, being a Friday night, and uh, everybody's got things to do. So I figured let me just uh, come on early and get get this done. And uh, also want to say uh, also a big welcome to uh, those of you from uh, Angry Ben's Angry Weather uh, joining us uh, tonight, as well as New York, New Jersey, Connecticut Stormwatch page, my Facebook page, meteorologist Joe Chaffee, and of course those that are on my, uh, my weather app uh, for their Android devices on Google Play, and that's a free app, by the way. Uh, welcome. Uh, they get a notification when the live stream starts at 6 o'clock, and they can watch right from uh, from the app. So I'll put the link up on there. Or just go to Google Play and you can just search Joe Chaffee. Uh, you can see the spelling right over there, C-I-O-F-F-I, and <clears throat> download it. Uh, the iPhone version, just still waiting, okay? When it's out, uh, believe me, I, I, I will let you know. So uh, the uh, blizzard in the Northern Plains winding down. So we're going to talk about that. Uh, we've got rain still going on in parts of the east. The rain is soon to come to an end in my neck of the woods. Already has ended in eastern Pennsylvania and uh, into north, northern New Jersey and the Hudson Valley. And it'll be ending on Long Island and southern New England shortly. Uh, we are in some places uh, trying to shoot for the wettest years on record. And some places are going to get very close. We're going to have another shot for rain on New Year's Eve. It's going to come in late in the afternoon. So whatever falls late in the afternoon until midnight will count toward 2018. I know for where I am, uh, we're at 62, 63, and I think we need to get to 64 and a half. Uh, that was as of 4 o'clock. So there's probably going to be some a few more ticks to today's numbers. 
So I'm guessing we're going to need about an inch and a half of rain uh, in, for Central Long Island, uh, Isla MacArthur Airport, to take out the 1989 record that sits up in the 64 and change. But but uh, that may be a bit tough. I don't know if we're going to be able to get that much rain squeezed in uh, in about six hours on uh, on New Year's Eve night. So we're going to talk about the next weather system. Still have this pretty active, stormy part of the pattern. Uh, the cold air is lacking for obvious reasons. So we have been having this you know flow from the Pacific. Uh, which we're going to talk about. Uh, we're, going to, we're going to talk about the weather going into next week. Everybody is obsessed about the pattern change and, and, uh, that that uh, is is coming, and I, I want to say a couple of things front and center about that. And, and we're going to do that after we do the current weather. Uh, you cannot look at the the process of pattern change. It's not like you flip a switch and you go from one thing to another. This is a very very slow grinding process. It can take a couple of weeks to play out. Uh, it, it's uh, you can get fooled along the way where models are doing things uh, suddenly it, it looks like it's not going to change or maybe the, it's going to change even faster you have to be patient and, and let the process play out we are uh, looking at this in conjunction with the big split in the vortex in the stratosphere we you know we still don't that split actually the process has started, but the actual splitting of the vortex is not going to come for another five days or so. And then it, that has to play itself out as well. So there's usually about a, a 10 day to two week lag time between the time of the split and the, uh, the practical appearance of the change uh, in, uh, in the current weather. I think what you're going to see is a very slow modification edging of the pattern uh, step by step by step and it's going to take a while until we get there so uh, patience uh, where we're going to where we are we going to wind up I don't know I don't know where this takes us uh, I know where it took us last February when it happened around the 15th and 16th and it didn't really make its appearance until the very end of February and then it played out through much of March so uh, you got you, you have to be patient that's all I can tell you and I don't know uh, sometimes the pattern change you want and the pattern change you get may be two very different things all right I've gotten into this argument with folks before uh, saying that uh, the pattern uh, you know some, this happens happened a couple of times where the pattern changes but uh, the uh, change that you might see in the practical day-to-day -day weather is not really all that evident or obvious and they'll say well the pattern didn't change no the pattern did change just didn't change to what you wanted it to change to and this is why uh my approach and those of you who've been with me long enough you, you get this uh is basically we just we just you know watch it day by day see where it takes us where it goes and then we could start applying it uh to uh, the short-term weather so We'll, we'll talk about the long range again in a little bit. Let's get uh, the short range done, the current weather that's going on now. We do have, uh, still have, you know, uh, really the amount of severe weather that's gone on uh, with uh, this system uh, has been pretty impressive. We still have some heavy rains and thunderstorms. You'll notice, by the way, the southern part of that front is having a real difficult time pushing eastward across the Gulf states. And uh, this is why we're going to have another weather event come Monday night and Tuesday, because we're going to get another wave developing on that front. The bottom part of that front's going to stall out. The northern part of the front and the, and the, and the low, that's moving right along. But we're going to see uh, the uh, southern part uh, get left behind, and from this we're going to get another wave. And in the meantime, we are, have been seeing severe weather today across North Carolina uh, there were a couple of tornado warnings that popped up in a few spots today. There's a marginal risk of severe weather that continues, but the back edge of the rain now is just about to uh, New York City on this radar view uh, that's uh, on uh, SPC's uh, uh, map. So uh, at least from, for, for me, we're going to finally get this rain out of the way and weather conditions are going to uh, improve. And in the meantime, when we look at the uh, satellite loop tonight, uh, you can also see how the bottom edge of the clouds kind of lingering there. You've got a uh, subtropical feed of moisture running uh, from the Pacific across Mexico and into Texas. So that is setting us up 
for the next thing. Also, uh, you're looking at um, uh, moisture back over into West Texas and New Mexico. And that is the system that is producing a winter storm in the state of New Mexico today. And we've got some stuff going on in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, Stuart Rind, all these weather models stink. I'm not quite understanding what, what you mean by that because, you know, it's not the model's fault that the weather is the way it is. Uh, they uh, work with, you know, they do the math and, and the physics and the thermodynamics and they come up with uh, their ideas of where the weather is going to go going forward. This is no easy job. Uh, but, you know, I, 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 I'm guessing it's the frustration if you're looking for um, colder weather to come. It, 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 again, you got to let the process play out. I don't know where this is all going to wind up. Uh, I've seen a lot of different predictions out there. Some of them um, are um, bullish. Some of them not so bullish. I don't know. Uh, so all we can do is sit back and watch. I, I've always said uh, that I'm much more of a short-term guy. Uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm not really versed very well in in the long range and how that uh, that all works. So uh, the rainfall, since we do have another system coming in the next seven days, uh, we can uh, uh, see what the rainfall is going to be like, and it is going to be uh, extensive again. Uh, looks like it's going to be another round of uh, bullish uh, rain amounts uh, for uh, the southeast. Now, I, you got to be a little careful here because this is, uh, for the next seven days, there is a system that's being telegraphed for the end of next week. That the European today, by the way, uh, it ha is uh, much more robust, showing a deepening low moving up the east coast at the end of next week and early next weekend. So we may wind up seeing if models trend in that direction, uh, these uh, numbers go up, especially up uh, further to the north. So this pretty much covers everything through at least, it, it, it covers probably Tuesday's event, and then you'll have a system coming across the south so that you're going to get some, some more big amounts uh, through the Gulf states of uh, three, four, five inches, uh, extending up into the Carolinas and offshore. Uh, looks like another inch to an inch and a half possible for uh, my area. A bit of a hole there for you, Johnny Quest. Uh, perhaps you won't get as much, but that's WPC's view. Uh, also got to be a little careful here uh, with the numbers because there is a little bit of front end loading activity from what's what's up there now. So especially when you look up uh, into uh, eastern New England where the rain is going to continue a bit longer. Uh, out in the Pacific Northwest, more uh, big rains coming into the Pacific Northwest. Much of California, though, through the next seven days, uh, looks to be dry. The Southwest getting a, a bit of moisture, and of course, we're seeing that in the form of uh, of, of snow today. So, a lot of the warnings and, and watches have gone down. We've got a narrowing area of flood watches that uh, remain in effect in parts of west, northwestern South Carolina. Western North Carolina and Southwestern Virginia. And there are also flood advisories and flood warnings because of the heavy rains. There were a lot of flash flood warnings up through parts of the Gulf states earlier. That's uh, kind of calmed down a bit now. We are seeing winter storm warnings still up for much of New Mexico. I have to tell you, I looked at some of the snow amounts that have been reported so far. Uh, they weren't anything extraordinary from uh, you know from the standpoint of big snows. Uh, I saw some six, seven inch amounts, but they're getting additional snowfall here going into tonight. And they still have the blizzard warning up for in and around Albuquerque and surrounding areas nearby with winter weather advisories. You've got uh, freeze watches and freeze warnings for parts of Arizona and down through California, uh, uh, coastal. Uh, I'm sorry, central California. And uh, winter storm watches are now up for parts of the northern Rockies from Wyoming on up into Montana uh, with advisories posted as you go further north into northern Idaho and uh, northeastern Washington. So uh, this storm winding down, the one that moved out of the plains uh, with the one foot plus snows, you're going to probably see some more snow over the week, uh, 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 Sunday night, Monday with the next low that is going to be uh, coming up uh, for Monday. Uh, okay, so uh, let me, let's get this back up on board here. Nope, that's the wrong one. Hang on a second, folks. Where is my window capture? 
I always lose this thing. There we go. I have it hidden away. Okay, so uh, we'll bring up the surface map first. You notice, by the way, this whole system is, you know, it basically reflects the, the, the trough that we're dealing with. It's how elongated it all is, more north-south. Uh, with it. So this is another one of these systems that actually impacted a very large geographic area. This is what it looks like on the uh, wide view. Now, there is some uh, cold air uh, that is coming in behind the low. Uh, we've got temperatures, I mean, not crazy cold. We've got uh, teens and single digits in the areas that got heavy snow across Minnesota and back through the Dakotas. You would kind of expect this uh, uh, 20s uh, throughout much of Wisconsin and into the upper peninsula of Michigan. Some areas getting some uh, moderate to heavy snow on the upper peninsula, still snowing in parts of northwestern Wisconsin. Uh, the low center uh, is making progress now as it moves into Canada. And of course, we got a somewhat warm sector today uh, with uh, temperatures that climbed up into the upper 50s. The moderate rains from earlier have ended, but the real warm sector is down in eastern North Carolina. And you can see where you've got the dew points in the upper 60s and temperatures close to the 70 degree mark. So they're pretty saturated here. And the reason behind the uh, marginal risk of severe weather that uh, WPC has uh, in its forecast. The uh, radars right now, I'm going to freshen this guy up and we'll zoom in on the east. So the rain is ending now from west to, to east. This radar is usually about 15 to 20 minutes behind. So you, it's, it's, it's probably a bit further along. So I would say that the rain has probably ended in New York City. If it hasn't, it will end shortly. And then go, go down right near the Virginia, North Carolina border, right into that, that warm sector that I just showed you. You can see that uh, snaking line of thunderstorms that's developing across North Carolina and some of those are quite strong possibly even severe and the, then you've got another area that's bubbling up in uh, coastal Georgia uh, more heavy rain and thunderstorms back in the Florida panhandle again this is the southern part of that frontal boundary that is going to stall out and set us up for the uh, next weather system that is uh, headed our way all right so there's your vortex split, okay, up at the stratosphere. We're going to come back to this, all right? It, today's, the, the latest model run still uh, creates the split. So, uh, and we'll tell you what that means uh, shortly. But in the meantime, let's come back uh, to what we can expect to happen in the short range. And that's at the end of the period on the new GFS, which, by the way, I, I am going to, going forward... Uh, I'm going to probably, uh, I'm going to spend less and less time on the operational GFS that's, that's there now and go more toward the parallel GFS because that's the one that uh, is going to be front and center very soon and this GFS here is going to disappear. So uh, uh, just going to kind of phase it out. But since this has already completed its run and the new parallel has not, uh, I want to have, I want to at least take you through this. So uh, weather conditions improve as we go through the weekend. Much of the east area east of the Rockies will be dry on Saturday, but you'll notice there's lingering precip with that stall front to the south on Sunday. And now you've got another low that comes uh, out of uh, the Gulf and develops in southern Arkansas. At the same time, by the way, you have an Arctic boundary. You, you can see it approach the Dakotas and northern Minnesota here uh, Sunday night, and that's dropping southeastward. That's going to have an area of snow with it. And, and models right now are, are, are uh, either keeping uh, the areas separate or, as in the case of the NAM, uh, the NAM is actually energizing the low and, and bringing more of that cold air down so that you're seeing snow, uh, uh, an area of uh, heavier snows breaking out across Iowa and in through Wisconsin. The uh, GFS is keeping the two streams separate. And that's going to be very important uh, with regards to how much additional snows fall and where they fall. Because if it's all with the Arctic boundary, it might be a few inches in some places. Uh, but if it uh, gets involved with this uh, short wave that's coming up with the developing low moving uh, into the uh, west, going well west of the Appalachians, 
then you could have the snow getting energized and being a bit more significant. And that's something we're going to keep an eye on. Big cold high comes down behind it. Uh, low pressure heads up uh, into Ohio. Uh, you're going to have a warm front. And this warm front is going to make it pretty far north. And you'll notice there's not a whole lot of rain that, that, it, that it shows for Virginia and North Carolina. Most of the heavier rains are uh, from Pennsylvania and New Jersey to New York City and southern New England. So the uh, low, uh, taking the track that where it is, uh, and the uh, movement up northeastward, uh, the way the short wave is going to be uh, affecting this, uh, the axis of heavy rain is going to be further north. So it, it, it seems to gel more for northern Ohio, northern PA, and then uh, southern New England to Long Island Monday night into Tuesday morning. So I guess, Chris Alley, if you're, you're still there, I, we might have that shot depending on how uh, the, the rain sets up before midnight. It's going to be close. Uh, I, I think ultimately it falls short of the record, but it might get it, it, it may finish up at number two or number three wettest year. This is all going to move along. Weather conditions are going to improve New Year's Day. Colder air comes in for Wednesday and Thursday, but this cold high is going to weaken because the flow in Canada, if you look look at the isobars across Canada by the middle of next week, they're all straight west to east. So there's Pacific air that's, that's kind of flooding uh, the uh, U.S. and southern Canada here for later next week. So the cold air in the east is going to be limited. The system on, on uh, Monday night, Tuesday is going to do the same thing this one's doing. You're going to have a stalled frontal boundary left behind. A low is going to develop on it. Now, one of the things I'm noticing is the GFS has been tracking uh, further northwest with every run. Uh, it is uh, ca trying to catch up to the parallel GFS, which has already been further northwest than the operational GFS. And the European is the most robust of all the models with this, this system for the end of next week. I'll get to the upper area in a second to show you how it plays. Uh, the GFS kind of takes this out. Uh, you, you get, uh, uh, there, there are some cold fronts that are going to be trying to come down uh, into southeastern Canada and sort of grazing parts of the northeast. It probably prevents it from getting uh, into what we'll call a, a true blowtorch uh, pattern uh, because you are going to have these weak fronts coming through. And then after that, well, this falls into the who knows category, but uh, just to give you guys uh, a little bit of fun on this model going past day 10, you do get some snow uh, if uh, you're in Detroit. And, they, and you do get some snow if you're in in southern New England and in the northeast on this run. Okay, We don't believe this. This is not something that we forecast. Uh, it's just that it is what, what the model is doing. So this is a good time to now switch to the upper pattern and, and uh, take a look at what's happening. And there you have it. So one of the big problems with this operational GFS for some reason is that it's really overemphasizing this ridge in the east, uh, which we are we have right now accessed along the east coast. And that is going to be flattened out as we go through the weekend to some degree, only to pop back up on Monday. Now you've got another trough setting up in the west, another deep trough that sets up in the west, swings around. You get that system for Monday night, Tuesday. Now there's a leftover energy that drops down into the southwest early next week, down into New Mexico and West Texas. That gets kicked along, and you'll notice across Canada, you're seeing rotation going on with the upper lows that are up there, and then another short wave is swinging around. The GFS keeps these systems completely separate. Uh, the northern stream feature is pretty compact. The southern stream feature is is uh, is is not really all that vigorous. It gets kicked along to the northeast and out, and then you start to see the model, you know, pull the vortex out, uh, still leaving some weak troughing in the east, but nothing spectacular. And it you know kind of gets back to some troughing as we get closer to the end of the period. I have no idea if that's going to be how it, how it winds up. Uh, much beyond the seven or eight day time frame, but I, I, I want to go to the European because the European uh, is has been has been more consistent on its last couple of runs. So, first off, with whatever happens, they're all kind of on the same page with everything that happens through the middle part of next week, and there was no issue with that. But where they differ is with this system in the southwest. 
for later next week, where the European now is showing a very vigorous system moving across the southern stream. And then it's got this northern stream energy that, that comes down and uh, doesn't phase with it, but it, it energizes it and lifts it up, uh, up the coast. And it does have a deepening coast-hugging low. It's all rain, uh, except maybe up into in central and northern New England. But it does have a deepening low running up just, just right along the immediate coast from the Carolinas into the Gulf of Maine with this. And that, that makes the upper pattern a bit different uh, with the Europeans' outcome going forward. Uh, it, it, it is, um, there's still, you know, there, there are attempts to where you do get some cold air that comes down if this northern trough is important. You'll get some colder air to come down behind it. The problem is uh, whether that has any staying power because the upper, low, the, uh, the upper low winds up lifting out only to have the next one getting ready to come down and around. All of this is part of this grinding process that I've, I keep coming back to with respect to the longer range. Uh, we, are, we, we are a good uh, 10 days of watching this all play out, and it might even be a bit longer than that. So let's look at uh, upstairs up in the stratosphere uh, to see what's going on, because nothing really has changed from that respect. Uh, the models continue to show... Um, this event happening. Uh, the implications won't be uh, evident for a while, but uh, f first off, let me shrink this a bit so you guys can see the map a bit better. I want you to be able to at least see the dates. Remember, we're way up where planes fly, okay? Uh, and, you know, we're talking six and a half, seven miles up. So we're starting from today. This is the state of the what the stratosphere looks like right now. The upper low, the, the polar vortex is getting stretched north-south by this attacking warm air that is moving into the polar region. Uh, the vortex continues to stretch. Uh, the warm air continues to attack it. And then on Tuesday, we start to get the split. So we're only a few days away from the beginnings of this split. Uh, when the split is completed, which is toward the end of the week, you're, you're left with a, a, a polar vortex that migrates back up toward northern Europe and Siberia, Siberia, and then a weaker polar vortex that drops down into northern New England. And as we move through time, that polar vortex gets pulled up toward Labrador and it just kind of stays there. It actually strengthens a little bit as we move toward the, the on this run anyway. Uh, now we're at January 10th or 11th. Uh, at the point where we have some consistency in the flow at that level uh, starts uh, on the starting from about the second or third. If you follow the flow from uh, uh, and I think maybe this is a good time to use the paint box. All right, so there's your vortex. Let me just bring the paint box up so you guys can see this. Okay, and you got it there, so you're able to see this. So here, here's here's the thing, uh, and. I'm 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 also I'm learning here. Okay, this is all. This is I I paid attention to this over the last year or two, but I'm kind of really paying attention to it now. But the idea is with the split polar vortex. So you got a low up here, polar vortex one. Here's polar vortex number two. Okay, this is a high. Right there. So remember, clockwise around highs, counterclockwise around lows in terms of the wind flow. The idea is that uh, your air masses would be, you know, do something like this, okay, in in uh, this sort of scenario. That is uh, the the flow in the stratosphere, and that it, and that should eventually translate uh, to the bottom of the atmosphere. The split nature of it would suggest that there could be some blocking that gets involved. Uh, that. Uh, is something we're going to have to watch evolve in the longer term. It's it's 
There's blocking near Scandinavia. That's pretty far to the east. We need the you would need the blocking to come further west. It's 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 one element. You don't have to really have it. This this might be enough. Uh, I mean, certainly should be enough to bring down colder air into the eastern part of the United States. What this doesn't tell you, though, it doesn't tell you how much colder air, it doesn't tell you how far south the cold air is going to get. You assume that it might get pretty far south because of the way the uh, vortex uh, is oriented in the, in the northeast. But uh, there's a practical nature to it. And I want to just show you, by the way, this is the top of the atmosphere, all right? This is what it looks like at the top of the atmosphere. And the date on this is January 7th of 2019. That is a, a week from uh, this coming Monday. All right. Now, uh, that is at six and a half miles up. Let's go up to 18,000. Let's go down now. Let's go down closer to the ground and let's go to 18,000 feet. That is the difference here. Okay. You are seeing much more activity going on in terms of upper lows, in terms of ridges and troughs. Uh, we. Uh, it doesn't play out in terms of the practical nature of, of the weather at the, gr at the ground level for a while. So it might be another week after this before you truly see, it's, it's truly see the impact of the, of, the, of the split in the polar vortex in the upper atmosphere. I am just as curious as you are as to where this is going. Uh, I, you know, the, the folks that fo follow this very, very closely uh, suggest that what we're seeing is going to bring colder uh, and snowier weather into the eastern part of the United States uh, beginning uh, in about 10 days to two weeks uh, for the pattern change to play out. So you're talking about mid-month in January and beyond. We got to get there. So the, 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 the process of doing the work to get there is going to be a bit painful <laughs> in through all of this. I still wonder whether, though, it, 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 that there still might not be somewhere between now and the middle of January, uh, you might have a setup where somebody gets a surprise. I don't know. I, I'm just throwing it out there. Uh, but let's see with the parallel GFS. How much of that do we have? We don't have a whole lot of it, but but I can already uh, see some major, you know, some big differences with the operational. So let's go back. Let's get a little closer. We're going to spend more time with the uh, parallel GFS, as I said, going forward. It, it coming back. All right, so we'll play out. You know, here's Monday. We know that's going to happen Monday night into Tuesday. We're basically in a ridge position here. Uh, now, here comes that southern system. Uh, it has a much more vigorous system than the operational run does. Carries it off to the east. Not quite as vigorous as the European. Troughing uh, coming into... Uh, the northeast next weekend so there'll probably be another frontal passage of some kind and that's as far out as we go we only have out to about 210 hours uh, but we do have at least some cold highs coming down let's see what it does with the surface with this so there's your low for Tuesday and now here comes your low now look at that now there's going to be some leftover cold air behind the system on Tuesday so let's see if it lasts uh, this what, what I think is significant about this run is that it, it's bringing precip up uh, north of New York City and it actually has it as frozen because there again there is some leftover cold air that's going to gradually disappear because of that westerly flow across Canada but uh, the flow coming across Canada is much less pronounced than it was on the regular GFS because the, the parallel GFS has got more weather systems coming in the flow uh, it's got a more active northern jet here uh, and it says that yeah, some Pacific air kind of comes comes in, but it's short-lived because the North is getting more and more involved. Expect, by the way, a tremendous amount of... Keep expecting... Whoops. I'm sorry, guys. That's my fault. I uh, forgot to switch maps. <laughs> uh, silly me. Okay. So there's your parallel GFS for late next week. Here's Tuesday. That goes by. Cold air comes in, not overly cold, but cold enough. And then you've got this next low, which the, the parallel has further north. The European, by the way, since you're going to ask, is uh, very robust with this. It's hard to see on this map. European maps are, are terrible um, in terms of the... Uh, it's not the fault of tropical tidbits. It's just the way they are. And here's a close-up view. See, the European's got a low 
in western North Carolina redeveloping on the coast that winds up as a 979 low right along the coast of Maine on uh, next Saturday. So it would have uh, a, another big rain event. Uh, a big, it, it has another big rain event for next Friday with a low moving up the coast, a deepening low moving up the coast. But that's because the Europeans' upper air is very vigorous with this upper low. And then it's got the northern trough coming down and getting involved. The European and the parallel GFS are pretty close here. The operational is, is, is you know, sort of a, in la-la land uh, and, and a bit out of it. So here's, here's how I would wrap this up tonight from the standpoint of where the pattern is going in the long term. Uh, it's going to take time. Uh, the next couple of weeks, uh, it's just is going to be about uh, volatility. It's going to be about evolution. And we are going to, uh, you know, sit back and watch it play and see where it winds up. Um, there's other things going on you have to consider, too, uh, uh, from what uh, those that follow the Madden-Julian oscillation. I keep, I've been reading now that it's supposed to be going into a, a, a cold, snowy phase for the East uh, around mid-month to coincide with the completion of what's going on in the stratosphere. You know, I don't know. Uh, I, I hate to look. I, 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 I'm always. If you're new here, you, this this is going to be a shock to you. Those of you who have been here for a while know, I'm not uh, afraid to come out and say I'm I'm not sure about something that I don't know what the implications are about one thing or another because that's the reality of it, folks. It, you know, weather uh, gives you a certain amount of um, uh, of of uh, certitude. Uh, when, where you can see things and, and say, okay, I'm pretty sure that this is what's going to happen. And then there are times where you just have to throw your hands up and just say, I don't know. Uh, and that's kind of where we're at right now. We're in this vast unknown. I keep going back to last February, waiting for those, uh, thinking about the period of the two weeks after the split, waiting for the whole pattern to just put it, put all the pieces together. And it finally did. Uh, but it, but it took a while, and it was a uh, it was a frustrating uh, process uh, to watch. Um, uh, just reading your 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 comments on here, we shovel in three weeks, and in six weeks we won't recognize with the massive snow banks. Says Michael Bologna. Look, uh, bear in mind that all of this could happen. Okay. And you can wind up with a situation where you're so deep into the cold air, in the cold, dry air, that uh, you get very little in the way of precip. Just bear that in mind that that's always a possibility. There's no guarantee that uh, you get all this cold air, you're, you're waiting for a cold pattern to set up. Obviously, you need some cold air, but uh, you also need to have storms to work with. And if the pattern, if the jet stream pattern is too overwhelming with the northern stream, uh, suppressing everything, you could just wind up being cold and dry. That is not uh, out of the question. Okay, so just you know, remember. And who just brought up 2015? You know, I was thinking about that today. I just saw that 5,000 subscribers with no videos. I would remind everybody from the winter of 2014-15. Uh, uh, now it's not this. You know, not everything is the same, obviously, but. We had a warm December that year. Of, uh, temperatures three and a half uh, degrees above average. We had a little bit of snow, uh, but uh, it was a warm December, and we didn't even put down our first inch of snow until I think it was around January fifth or sixth, and that was just you know a coating to an inch in most places, and it was gone within a day or two. Uh, the big pattern change happened around the fifteenth of the month during those two weeks. And then it all just, the bottom just fell out toward the end of January through February and through March. Uh, that was a, a bitter cold eight-week stretch. But the first half of the winter was, was not, you know, was nothing else to write home about. Um, you know, we've had a lot of years where the winters have been more back-end loaded. This, is, this time around, we had our cold November. December was so-so, but, you know, hardly, you know, at least down here. And, and except for the mid-Atlantic states, you got your big snowstorm that you had in the in the mid-Atlantic states this year in in the month of December. But uh, there's been a bit of a gap in between because there hasn't been uh, much of anything at all. If you go from Washington to 
Washington, D.C. to just north of New York City. You draw lines, east-west lines through the, both those points, and there's this kind of gap. And then you had snow as you moved away, accumulating snows through central and upstate New York and through interior uh, New England and in northern New England. So uh, this December has been a bit different uh, than the one from uh, back in, in December of 14. But nonetheless, my point is that uh, it... It took a while for that winter to get going, and then it got going for the whole second half, and uh, you just couldn't wait to get it. It, it. it wouldn't get out. It wouldn't leave when it came to March. Uh, I could remember everything still being frozen. The water, the the, the uh, fresh water uh, lakes and ponds around where I live were all still frozen. Frozen as of uh, you know toward the end of March, which I had never seen uh, uh, before uh, to see them frozen that late. Uh, into uh, the month of March. Uh, usually the sun angle does its job even, and, and it was so cold that uh, it, it wouldn't even, uh, it, it didn't even help. Um, yeah, and I think that's a good point, Scott Briller. For New York City at least, if uh, someone said you'd have about six inches of total snow by January and February 1st, you wouldn't complain. Well, that's kind of where we are, even though it did come uh, in the uh, middle of um, little, uh, middle of November. So, uh, patience for all you snow lovers, okay? I know it's hard. <laughs> I know it's difficult. Uh, I, I, I've said many times jokingly that uh, snow lovers seem to think that they are entitled to snow, to snow every single day starting on November 1st and going to at least April 30th and maybe even toward May 15th or the day before Memorial Day. And it just doesn't work that way. Uh, it, it, it really doesn't. And... and uh, uh, there's there's a there's going to be a subpar winter along the way. Those of you who are old enough uh, to uh, remember the winters of 96, 97, 97, 98, 98, 99, and 99, 2000 in my neck of the woods were some of the worst uh, winters as far as snowfall. There was hardly any, okay? And I mean hardly any. One of those winters, I believe it was 97, 98, it, didn't, it, it did not snow from in, in, the, uh, in the winter season, December 20th to March 20th. The, the five inches of snow that fell, fell uh, the day after the first day of spring in, uh, in March of 1998. Uh, otherwise, and, and that was kind of a freak thing. That only happened that it snowed over New York City and some places nearby, and that was it. Because if that, if that system hadn't happened, New York City would have had its first year of being completely shut out of of snow from uh, beginning to end. That is something that uh, has uh, never ever happened. All right, so uh, I think we'll come, we're coming to an end here. Uh, let's. Uh, Let's just wrap it up by saying, uh, for those of you who are interested, I'm making it gigantic here. You can uh, uh, have a uh, an additional uh, weather experience. I do have a subscription platform on Patreon, uh, which is uh, just uh, two bucks a month, uh, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it up here uh, for you. I'll put the link on for those of you who are interested. Uh, again, it's just uh, two dollars a month, and you get. Uh, live streams for Patreon members only. We had one this morning. Uh, post just for Patreon members so you can message me at any time. Uh, and if you uh, are a snow removal guy, uh, if that's your business and you need a little extra help, there are a couple of higher tiers in there uh, that uh, you can look at. And uh, I'll be uh, more than willing to, to give you a hand when it comes to uh, to uh, weather and weather predictions with respect to uh, snow events. Should we ever have any? Okay. Uh, for free, uh, for those of you who have Android devices, and you can see all my website posts uh, on here uh, with a, a virtual ad-free experience. So there's one tiny little ad that I have on there to help me pay for all of this. Uh, but uh, there you have it. It's on Google Play. Uh, so you can download it for your Android device, even though the weather focus on there is for eastern, basically from northern New Jersey, New York City, Long Island, southern Connecticut, and the lower Hudson Valley, south of Route 84. Uh, but I do a lot of other things on there in terms of long-range uh, analysis. And you can uh, certainly, uh, that you might find useful if you even if you live outside that area. And there is going to be an update coming where you'll be able to put in your own location 
and bring up your own local conditions and local forecasts and that hopefully will coincide with the iPhone version of this which as I've been saying every day for on infinitum uh, we are still waiting for that so there's the Patreon platform and the uh, the app for Android on Google Play alright folks uh, this weekend I don't know for sure how I'm going to do this I'll probably do if I do a live stream tomorrow it won't be in the evening uh, I will probably do it early in the afternoon uh, maybe after the European run is done uh, I'll try to do a live stream around 2 or two or 3 o'clock uh, and uh, then Sunday that will depend I'm going to guess that if I do it on Sunday it'll maybe be a Sunday evening but I'm not sure so just watch the schedule I'll always, I, I've been getting into a good habit of putting the schedule up uh, a couple of uh, at least a couple of hours before the actual live stream so I'll try to get it up even sooner so you have a good idea as to when the live stream is going to happen and next week Monday and Tuesday I'm working so I will be here and we'll be back to regular time we'll be doing regular time live streams Monday New Year's Eve and Tuesday New Year's Day at uh, 7 o'clock uh, Eastern time so enjoy your weekend we'll hopefully we'll see you on board at some point over the weekend and uh, take care and be safe please if you are traveling uh, during these holidays there are a lot of folks out there that are not employing the best of driving habits uh, when when it comes to being on the road especially when there's uh, rain going on so just take it or snow if that happens to be the case I'm not fishing this time of year Nick okay uh, have a great uh, night everybody we'll uh, uh, we'll see you tomorrow